Okay, so just a bit more of a background. So uh, I was Digital Technology Director for EE um, up till January this year. Uh, I have recently gone contracting. I'm now interim head of digital delivery for uh, Department of Work and Pensions. So, so my background is um, in that big grungy corporate world, which I know many of you will be in as well, uh, where we're trying to do agile in a big corporate environment. And um, we did a fair bit at EE. We rebuilt the EE website uh, from the ground up. Big, big challenge, uh, big, big problems we had, but ultimately got there in the end. Uh, we were using a bit of Agile there, um, but not quite the same sort of extent that the government's trying to go to at the moment. So um, what's the Department of Work and Pensions all about? What's our world? So the first thing which really struck me is that the Department of Work and Pensions has got a noble cause. It's got a noble cause which is a bit unusual uh, in that big corporate environment that we're, I'm so used to. So it is about helping people, lifting, lifting people out of poverty and staying out of poverty. Um, clearly, that gives them a very different audience to what I'm used to. So we're not trying to sell to the wealthy and you know, the early adopters and all that sort of stuff. We're dealing with the, the most vulnerable, the least able to use digital services in many cases. Not in all cases, probably all of you will use the DWP at some point in your life because you'll claim your pension. Yep. Just to give you a, f a feel for the scale of it, there's 25 million customers and it's a uh, £165 billion pound budget. It makes it one of, if you think about what it's doing, it's handing out money, it makes it one of the biggest banks in the world. So it's a massive organisation. Um, so DWP is changing quite quickly and it's got a very big business transformation program going on at the moment. It's trying to get the whole department, 89,000 people, thinking about Agile and working in a, an Agile way. So that's clearly not just delivering digital services, it's delivering whatever they're doing. So it's people working in job centres and how they behave and work within the job centre. Um, but it is also about digital service development and operation as well. So. That's what I'm going to hone in on in this, uh, in this uh, presentation. So what was it? So the way DWP has worked in the past and to some extent is still working to at the moment, it's an outsource model, it's waterfall, it's requirements based, and it's a very hierarchical organisation. But they're transitioning to in-house, so they're massively recruiting technical staff. A, they're trying to recruit 500 technical staff to bring stuff in-house. They're doing that across the whole country. So DWP is decentralised. They've got people in Leeds, they've got people in Manchester, Newcastle, all over the place, which leads to its own problems, actually. But um, There's a big move to Agile, um, and there's a massive move to user-centred design and putting user research and the users at, at the centre of everything we do. And, of course, you know, to go along with those is that collaborative culture. So less documentation, more people uh, sat together in the same room, you know, working together on stuff. Um, so I think, is, is, is everybody familiar with the government digital by default standard? Right, this is really worth looking at because it gives you a real feel for what the government's <laughs> trying to go through at the moment. So if you, um, if you go to gov.co.uk, no, sorry, gov.uk, uh, slash GDS slash service manual, I think it is. In there, it will describe the digital by default service standard. So this is being rolled out across the whole of government, and it's saying that anything which goes on that website has got to meet these standards. And right at the heart of it is users, and making sure that users, uh, their needs are really understood, that we've segmented the user base, uh, we've done the right research, got real users in, and we've talked about exactly what they need. And everything is worked around their uh, delivering value to them. So really delivering valuable user needs. Um, so that's the standard DWP are working for. And that's what is at the heart of the digital hubs that we're creating as well. So what's the digital hubs? So these are buildings actual buildings, so we've got one in Leeds just um, 
across the road from Asda, uh, head office. Uh, what's, what's that one? Um, these are centres where we are doing agile uh, properly, as best as we can anyway. Um, we're co-locating people and yeah, making, making sure that there's the right environments for doing agile well uh, and there's the right support mechanisms around that. So in Leeds here, for instance, uh, we've currently probably got about 12 agile teams um, that are delivering things like personal independence payment, uh, access to work, um, re-looking at the universal job match service, lots of quite heavy duty um, services. Uh, we're doing the same in Newcastle, we've, we've got three or four teams in Newcastle but that's going to be expanded dramatically. We're opening a new hub in Manchester and we're opening one in London as well. When we're fully up and running we hope to have uh, 15 to 20 agile teams working in each location. So as you can see, there's a massive commitment to Agile um, from within the government. Uh, so really, really what I wanted to talk about is, well, what's my experience of creating that environment and being part of that, that transformation? Because we're not there yet. Um, it started probably about a year ago with a hub in Leeds, and uh, we are starting to get to the point where services are going into public beta. So we're not, we've not really even delivered any live services. We've got one, but it didn't really fall into this model. But So it's still early days. And in terms of the transformation, it's still early days as well. I just wanted to talk to you about some of the challenges of that, but some of the opportunities as well, because we're leading that transformation and people are wanting it to happen right from the top. So we've got a permanent secretary and to be fair to the government, uh, the government actually support it as well. It's their idea, digital by default. It came from the cabinet office originally. Um, there's a real drive and demand right from the top that this works. It doesn't mean to say it does. It's still getting there. But, uh, OK. Um, so we've got all the things you'd expect within our child teams. Uh, we've got delivery management, product management, user research. Um, there's a lot of development, technical architecture, UX, whatever. It's completely cross-functional. One, one of the things that is different that I noticed compared to my time at EE was they start much earlier in the product life cycle than you would in a lot of, uh, a lot of companies. <coughs> so it's my, my experience, I don't, I don't know if it's the same with yours as well, is that uh, the Agile bit really came into, its, into the fore when you got into the technical development. What we're doing at DWP is we're, st we're starting the Agile approach right from the start of trying to design the product. So as an example of that, um, we're looking at universal job match, which probably nobody here has ever used. Has anybody used universal job match? Oh, there you go, right. Rubbish, isn't it? <laughs> it's absolutely rubbish. Um, <coughs> I, d I know this because my daughters use it as well. Um, so we've got a, a piece of work called Universal Job Match Replacement. Universal Job Match is a job site. It's actually a white labelled version of the Monster website. Uh, and as happens with white labelled versions of anything, it very quickly becomes uh, shabby, uh, left behind the main website. And people are sort of thinking, well, why did we do that? Um, they've not invested in it. Um, so, but the interesting thing is, is that the service development is called Universal Job Match Replacement. Actually, very, very quickly, because they're looking right at the beginning of it and looking at user needs and at defining the product, they've actually start, started to say, no, we don't need this. Let's close it down. And the reason is, is because what they've found from their user research is that actually most people are, unless they're just getting into work for the first time particularly younger people uh, most people know where to find jobs what they don't know how to do is how to apply successfully for them and how to go for interviews so very early on they're using the same sort of agile environment agile techniques to define the product based on the user needs and they're doing that by doing 
bringing people in and doing um, sort of interviews and all that sort of stuff. So, so that's, that's one of the big differences I noticed. And so right from the beginning, that's the case. But right from the beginning, we've got technical people involved in that. So, you know, when you're a developer, when I was a developer, it's way down the line that you actually get involved in actually building stuff. Here, the developers are involved right at the beginning to say, actually, should we be doing that at all? Should we be doing this instead? And they're just as much as part of the team as you know, the strategists and all that sort of stuff. Um, so where are we in terms of rollout? We've got quite a long way to go. We've got a big digital program going called Universal Credit Digital. And anybody who's familiar with the words Universal Credit would think that's a big disaster program. Uh, it's not the same one as that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a caveat around it. Uh, so, so there are two universal credit programs. There's the universal credit um, live program, um, which is the original disaster, which was uh, outsourcing to three big um, consultancies, usual suspects, uh, built three products, didn't work properly together. It's uh, cobbled together, wasted millions upon millions of pounds doing it. Um, the crisis sort of answer to that was patch it up and roll it out anyway because it, it was an important thing for the government to look like it's achieved something. In the meantime, they started a new programme called Universal Credit Digital and that is an agile programme um, with agile teams completely cross-functional um, reporting right into the permanent secretary. So it's a complete... Uh, agile program. That's, that's been run out of London and that's starting to roll out now and it's been massively more successful than the original program. Um, we've got a number of lots of other programs going on, new state pension, personal independence payments, stuff like that, where we've got waterfall programs with agile projects sitting within it and they're, they're what we've discovered is um, what we call the agile sandwich, which you might have heard of, no? So basically, we've got a stack load of grungy technology which moves in sort of 12, 18 month release cycles, something like that, um, where people are not quite ready to make that change into the agile world. We're doing agile development sort of in between, and then we've got this massive um, operation. You imagine all the job centres around the country, which also is not really in that agile sort of way. So it's what we've got is this agile sandwich and we're trying to you know, make, make the filling uh, a bigger bit and make the bread less, if you see what I mean. And that existing programs thing, it really stands into that. So we've got some uh, standalone projects that we're doing. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that's it. So we've still got a long way to go and I've probably been quite generous in terms of the proportion of agile stuff there. There's a real demand to do it. Mm. And you've stopped. Um, one of my challenges as head of digital delivery is to grow the capability of the agile teams. Uh, so I've got um, a sort of professional reporting line into all the agile project managers. Uh, and the approach we're taking is we've got an academy, which um, you know about. <laughs> Um, so we have, we're trying to teach civil servants how to work in an agile way, so we, we get all the different sorts of professions, we get developers, we get project managers, we get whatever, all the different skills, put them through an academy training course and then say right, go away and do things in an agile way. It's quite dangerous really, particularly when the leaders of the agile teams are new to agile. So. What we're doing now is we're sort of buddying up experienced people and less experienced people. So one of my challenges is, is growing the internal capability. So we're doing that through more and more training. We're also hiring uh, people to buddy up with, with the existing civil service and we're also recruiting as well. Uh, so we need a better mix of people. Very slow, isn't it? Uh, the big things which really strike me as being the common themes is we still haven't got the pace right. 
So we're doing things in a very agile way, uh, but it's still things seem to take a long time. Part of that's explained by this um, agile sandwich analogy, but also we've got uh, a situation where because we've got a lot of different professions coming together for the <coughs> first time, just having different people doing different roles, they've still not got into the way of working in an agile way across the different roles. Yeah, so there's a, there's a little bit of a handoff saying, you know, I'm a user researcher, so I do user research. A UX person can't do user research because that's not their job title, that sort of thing. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, so those sort of things we're trying to break down. Um, we've had projects go through the wonderful GDS assessment. Everything we do has got to meet that 18 point service um, standard, which I flipped up briefly earlier. We have to be assessed by that. So, so anything which you want to put on the gov.uk domain uh, <coughs> has got to meet that standard. And GDS don't approve things easily. And the, the most common problem we have is proving to them that we're producing real value for the user. And, um, and that, that's a difficult one because we're trying to produce minimum viable products and what that can quite easily slip into is what's easiest to deliver but it's not actually delivering enough value and uh, you know, meeting user needs. Um, with the sort of agile um, leaders that we've got, we've got this, the, the usual stuff around team dynamics, agile methods, all that usual stuff. That seems to stop working. Um, that's what an agile delivery manager does. It's worth noting though that um, we have got a mix of agile coaches and agile delivery managers. Um, what we're looking for when we're trying to develop people is to make sure that they're as good at managing the unblocking and the external stuff as delivering the agile sort of approach to things and using the, the right tools and stuff like that. So it's a real hybrid role. It's not just like a scrum master, you know, you're only inward facing. We're actually asking them, a lot of them because we're asking them to look outwards as well and unblock stuff. It might be around governance or resourcing and stuff like that. So it's quite, quite a hard job to do. Um, we're trying to develop, I'm trying to develop people into these T-shaped people, which you're probably familiar with. So people who are doing this agile delivery management job, uh, they need to understand what it is to develop software. They need to be you know, experienced in user experience. Um, and they've got to start working as a collective as well. So that's, that's another thing we've been doing is setting up the profession thing. So each hub is more or less going to be modeled on the Spotify model. So a number of feature teams and professions going across all bound together by a, uh, an overarching service. Um, so in Leeds, we're probably going to be doing health and social, in Newcastle, pensions, uh, fraud, error and debt, it's probably going to be Manchester, that sort of thing. Uh, so that's it, but there's just got a very short video just to end with, which hopefully will bring it to life a bit. So what this is, this is uh, real delivery managers talking about how we're going to change the space that we work in, uh, which might sound a bit odd really, but just getting the design of the areas they work in with the right uh, space around the whiteboards and getting the, the desk set up correctly and stuff like that. We've put quite a lot of thought into it. Oops, questions? I'll just have to figure out how this works. Yeah. We've got Hodgkin, Leeds and Newcastle. And we're extending that into Manchester. We've got a blend of service design, technology and learning within the same hubs. We've got Heads of roles starts. He's the UX guy. We've got leadership for the first time across roles. We've engaged architects, we're on with the plans, and we've got some real successes with the academy. We've got a research lab, which I've never seen within the public organisation, which is fantastic. And we're gathering inspiration from other sites, uh, both private sector and public sector.
So we need lots of breakout style areas where uh, groups of two, three or more, depending on the size of the problem being looked at, can just break away and just go into a huddle, use the environment that they've got. So using things like Lego, using post-it notes, using random bits of chair, whatever the environment can give us, we want to be able to use. But in order to actually do the focused work, we need to have an, an environment that will allow us to close off as much of the outside world as possible so we can get our heads down and crank through the work. The one thing that I do really like about the hub is that you've got lots of people all in one room and you can kind of see all the teams. For me, it's more a sense of community and kind of having, just having a desk that I can sit at, whether it's a hot desk or a desk. We have a couple of people who join our team for a couple of months at a time from kind of non-transformed area. As long as we've got the whiteboards and the all the collaboration spaces we actually use within the team, that's important. What's not so important is I don't really care what colour the walls are or what whether we've got opaque glass here or there. It's, it's, it's more about having the space that the team needs to have its breakout areas, its, its, uh, its team get together points and, and, and that we can actually still carry on and collaborate. So the moment it often feels like there are um, digital teams working alongside each other but not necessarily working together. So what would be useful would be some means of actually having a, a culture which, and it, which allows us to share the, 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 the services that we're developing. What's fantastic at the moment is the culture, certainly within Leeds at the moment, is very, very open. You know, we need that creative open space, but it's more about actually having the right kind of mindset, the right people, that right level of creativity, and the space, of course, to be able to, kind of, to, to demonstrate and to do that. <coughs> Number one on the list is, how do we energize the hub community for rapid delivery? We should be talking about, we did this, really great thing for the users, we delivered it, but we delivered it within two, three weeks, not delivering it within six, eight months. We need to re energize That's probably the biggest problem the we have. The whole building. It looks good, but it still takes a long time. <laughs> the users are absolutely at the heart of everything that we're doing within this building. At the moment, we see very little sign of that from the outside. You walk into the foyer of this building, there's no sign of the user anywhere. Lots of post it notes, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's the one thing that people notice when they come into the building, it's just the uh, basics notes. I think that stopped slightly earlier than it should have done, but never mind. Uh, right, so that, that's it really. It was just really an update about what we're doing in, in terms of hubs. Uh, we've still got quite a long way to go, but you know we're growing and we're learning and it's quite an exciting place to be. Um, yeah. So.